Greetings, greetings viewers and subscribers. So, the arms house start. <laughs> yeah man, the arms house start. My viewers, the arms house start. We have gotten our first strike from YouTube. Somebody reported a content to YouTube and they have given us our first strike. What they are saying is that the fact that it's our first strike, they are giving us a warning. If they have to strike us again, they are going to stop us from uploading videos for a week. Now, we have appealed that decision by YouTube. We sent in our appeal this morning. Well, we were informed of the strike this morning and we sent in our appeal. <laughs> you know, guess what? Somebody reported to YouTube. When we just started this channel, it was named Papaya Tours TV. We hadn't intended on taking this route. However, over time, yeah, we took this route. Now, when we just started, we did a do-it-yourself video, a tutorial. The title of that video was How to Apply for a US Visa Online. <laughs> we went through the process and showed you how you could apply for a US Visa. Somebody reported that video to YouTube and the reasons are harassment and cyberbullying. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to take bad things make laugh, you know. But let me tell you, of all the videos that we do, of all of the videos that we do, I burn out hoodlums and all these things. You, Mr. Sir, or you, Mrs. Ma'am, that's the video you could have found a report to YouTube. We are showing persons how to apply for a US visa. And that is what you are saying is harassment and cyberbullying. So who are we harassing? Who are we bullying? If we are teaching people how to apply for a US visa, you know, we have appealed to YouTube and they are going to review the content. We know that good sense is going to prevail. Yeah, man, we know that. So let's await the outcome. There's a zone of special operation in Savlamar or sections of Savlamar. We are going to be driving through some sections of the zones of special operation this zozo it started yesterday sunday january 16th 2022 now prime minister andrew holness he made a speech in november 2021 we are gonna let you listen what andrew holness said before we start showing you the journey here goes we need to get the jamaican people to understand that force can be used without violence. We need the police and the military to understand that you can use force without violence. And there was a moment when the idea clicked, when I could see in the room that people understood the concept, that force is not always violence that the organization of human and material resources to bring control to a, an area does not have to entail the taking of life or the abuse of citizens and that is what we did with the zones of special operations we organized human and material resources with strategy and logistics, with static and dynamic operations, to control a space to deliver peace to the community. So in effect, the zones of special operations was a peacekeeping mission. Now, Mr. Andrew Michael Holness, Prime Minister of Jamaica. I soon come back to you, sir. Let me just announce the journey that we are taking today. So we are going to start along Rickett Street. We are going to go through Desta Street. We are going to go around to 12th Street. When we reach 12th Street, you're going to see that the sun is in our eyes because this was an early morning commute. Then we are going to go out to Darling Street. And we are going to go up Darling Street. You'll notice that we are going to pass three checkpoints. But we were only stopped and checked at the last one. Encourage the people on the ground. <laughs> that 
it makes no sense you have checkpoints and you're not checking people every vehicle should be checked and when we say check we mean thoroughly checked now mr holness sir when the united states took out bin laden they used force and they used violence you can check all of the terrorists that were taken out both force and violence was used sir we are not expecting you to stand at the podium you know and say certain things but you see the message that we are sending as leaders we have to be careful criminals are listening criminals are watching them are not a drunk lawyer who are go around them kill babies then kill woman, then kill grandmother, then kill grandfather. Then you know as a drunk lawyer. You have to both use force and violence upon them. Because even when you hold them, even when you hold them and send them to a prison, they have access to telephone. So they are continuing with their criminal lifestyle behind bars. They are instructing who should live and who should die. That is the reality. So they may not say drunk here. You have to use force and violence at them. Because violence is what they know. Remember me tell you. So the message we are sending, we have to be careful. Talk to any policeman on the ground. They will tell you that messaging have a lot to do with what is happening in Jamaica. They may not say drunk here. Their perception is... And we are talking about perception. Their perception is them have the various human rights group to back them. Another perception is them have Indicom to back them. So when Mr. Terence Williams used to go up on TV and radio and talk all kind of this and that and him feel like he was helping the crime situation. In our view, he was making it worse because he was sending certain signals to the criminals. So you see messaging you see, messaging is important. Now, today, we have a number of stories for you. First up, this morning we got this WhatsApp message. It says, Good morning, PNL. Please continue to do the good work. Please, I'm asking you permission to use your medium to share this. Females who are using the public bathroom at Fairview Mall. Now, Fairview Mall is in Montego Bay, in the parish of St. James. Please be careful. Early Wednesday morning, about some minutes after 7, a young female went to use the bathroom and was about to leave when she was held up and robbed of all her money and other valuables by a hoodlum. He not only robbed her, but he also hold on and take away what he want from her. You can see it on your screen. Person went on to say, Ladies, be careful. Blessed love, PNL. Now, we made checks, and this report was verified. An incident did took place at that same mall early Wednesday morning. We are told that it took place about 25 minutes after 7 in the early morning. A female had gone to use the bathroom, and when she was leaving, a hoodlum held her up with a knife and forcefully did what he wanted to do with her, as also robbed her of over six thousand dollars in cash so ladies please be careful young lady if you are hearing this please we know it hard our hope is that you did not contract anything from this nasty drunk row it will go hard if you get over it but do what you must you're gonna need counseling find somebody who you trust and talk to them about it because we are sure that anywhere you are now you can't be feeling good, but find the inner strength and move on. Now, in this next story, we are learning that yesterday morning, Sunday, January 16th, 2022, some minutes after 10 o'clock, fire broke out at the Charles Garden Market in Montego Bay in the parish of St. James. We are told that several land carts, one closed store, one storeroom, and a cook shop as also a section of the roof at the market were destroyed by fire. We are learning that fire was seen coming from the stores. As a result, an alarm was raised. We are told that three units from the Montego Bay Fire Department responded to the fire. After about two hours, 
they were successful in bringing the fire under control. Now, if the fire department hadn't responded, you know, or them take long for come or something like that, many, many more shops would have been burnt down. Because for those who know Charles Garden Market, all of the shops, they are made out of boards. So we have to congratulate the Montego Bay Fire Department for bringing this fire under control. Now, if we get any further details, we'll be updating this story. But over in Westmoreland, we are told that two DT international box trucks as well as one Isuzu box truck were all destroyed by fire. Also, a 40 foot container was also destroyed. In addition to that, a small portion of a roof of a storeroom was destroyed. Now, these three trucks, the container and the storeroom, they are owned by Chandan and Sons. This fire it took place at Bambury in the Froome Police area in the parish of Westmoreland. It took place yesterday afternoon, Sunday, January 16th, 2022, some minutes after 4 p.m. Our information is that fire was seen coming from one of the trucks. Persons in the yard, they tried to extinguish the blaze, but they were unsuccessful. The fire, it quickly spread to the other trucks. The fire department were called in, and when they arrived on the scene, they managed to extinguish the blaze. The fire department were called, and we are told that units were dispatched from the Savlamar Fire Department as well as the Negril Fire Department. They arrived on the scene and they were able to extinguish the blaze. We are also learning that a fire truck from the Froome Sugar Factory also responded. When the smoke was cleared, the three trucks, one container and the storeroom were all destroyed by fire. We are told that the value of the damage is over 11 million Jamaican dollars. Now, Persons are always asking for conversion. The US rate now is about 155 Jamaican dollars. So just divide 11 million by 155 and you will know how much US that is. The Froom Police as well as the Fire Department, they are carrying out investigation to ascertain what could have caused this fire. Sad indeed. Now, we are learning that the Hanover Police, they seized an illegal gun yesterday morning. Sunday, January 16th, 2022, about some minutes after 8 o'clock. And this gun, it was an AK-47 assault rifle. The seizure of this weapon, it took place at Orange Bay, in the Green Island Police area, in the parish of Hanover. Now, we are learning that a team of police officers from the Hanover Division, they carried out a targeted raid at Orange Bay, in the parish of Hanover. An open lot adjoining the Orange Bay Country Club was searched and during this search, one AK-47 rifle with the serial number intact affixed with a magazine containing three rounds of 7.62 cartridges were found. The weapon, it was found in bushes at a section of the open lot. Congratulations to the Hanover police for recovering this weapon and the personal persons who pass on this intelligence enough respect you have saved many lives this gun this gun it wasn't intended to shoot birds or fish it was intended for human beings so enough respect keep on giving the police the intelligence job well done now we brought you the story last month and we also gave you an update it was about an incident that took place at red stripe spanish town road in the parish of St. Andrew. It took place Sunday, December 26th, 2021, some minutes after 1 a.m., early, early morning. The information we gave you then was that a security officer was on duty at the Red Stripe compound when he was held up by a hoodlum. This hoodlum, he was armed with a gun. The security officer on duty, he was tied up. The hoodlum who tied up the security officer, he then opened the place and allowed two trucks on the property. These two trucks, they were loaded with over 1,400 cases of Red Stripe and Dragon. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape. The Hunts Bay Police, they commenced investigation. A few days later, the truck that was used, well, one of the trucks that was used to transport the liquor, it was seized by the police. The police also carried out an operation where over 600 cases of dragon 
were seized from a property. A man was also taken into custody. That man, he's the driver for the truck. Now, an update. The police have now arrested and charged two persons. One of them is Christopher Rose. He's 32 years old and he's a truck driver. He lives at Greenwich Town, Kingston 13. The other man who the police have charged, his name is Hudson Skyers. He's 23 years old and he's a security guard. He's from West Albion in the parish of St. Thomas. No, Hudson Skyers and Christopher Rose, they have been charged with robbery aggravation, illegal possession of firearm, warehouse breaking, and conspiracy to robbery with aggravation. Now, Hudson Skyers, like we said, is a security guard. He, we are told, worked at the Red Stripe property from time to time. He was not the security officer on duty on the night of the robbery. It is said that he gave the hoodlums the information they needed to go to the property. It is said that he too also participated in the robbery. So for persons who were saying that the security officer on duty must know about it, we have made checks and no, he did not know about it. This security officer, who may have worked probably the day before, he was one of the planners for this robbery. So they will be going to the courts shortly to face their judgment. <laughs> you see, sometimes, them say, you know, sometimes, some things happen. I hear people say, it's an inside job. These are the reasons. This security guard, he works at Red Stripe sometimes. And he know the place set up. And he was one of the planners for this robbery. Remember, if you have not yet hit on the like button, hit on it. Some people are like you when you say it, you know. But we know that some of you, you are begging us to remind you hit on it because sometimes you are so caught up in the stories that you forget to hit on it so it's not like we are begging you to hit on it we are reminding you to, to hit on the like button now in the final story for today this one took place yesterday morning sunday january 16th 2022 about 10 30. it took place at a place named gutters in the granville area in the parish of saint james we are learning that a man He's popularly known as Gary. Now, Gary, he had gone to visit a lady. He was sitting at the front of the lady's house having a drink. Gary, he's in his early 40s. And the lady, she's in her mid-40s. So Gary was sitting at the front of the house. He was having a drink. When we are told that three hoodlums approached Gary. The three hoodlums, they were armed with guns. They immediately opened fire at Gary. Gary, he managed to run off and made good his escape. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape on foot in the area. Gary, when he checked, he received a gunshot wound to his left hand. The lady who was inside of her kitchen, she too was shot. She received a gunshot wound to her right foot. Both of them, they were taken to a nearby hospital where they were treated and admitted. Now, when this crime scene was processed, we are told that seven 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. So at least seven shots were fired at Gary. Only one hit him, and it hit him in his left hand. The lady, who had no idea what was going on outside, she received a wound to her right foot. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody.